in the wake of um, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the left has come up with a take that Vladimir Putin. And the take, take that is nothing other than cancel culture. In other words, Putin, we're going to be canceling you the same way that we cancel um, uh, conservatives in the United States. This is the, you could almost call it the BLM tactics now taken to the level of the global stage. Or to put it differently, the culture war has now overtaken American foreign policy. Um, Revolver News puts it very well. They call it George Floydism converted from a domestic cudgel into a foreign policy uh, doctrine. And I must say, this is actually a very a surreal to watch because there are such close analogies between what the left has been doing to domestic critics in this country, going after, you know, uh, racists and people who question the transgender movement and the idea is let's cancel them and cancel them how? Well, number one, let's, let's throw them off social media. And number two, uh, let's try to take away their, their banking privileges. Uh, and then let's put them on a no fly list. Uh, in other words, let's try to ruin them from going about their normal life. Remember, Michelle Malkin came on the podcast, talked about how she and her husband, her husband, by the way, has nothing to do with politics. They're banned from Airbnb. They can't stay at an Airbnb when they travel. So all of this is, is, um, very petty and very nasty. Uh, and, uh, and yet it might seem so like something that was, is being used at home in America as a kind of, uh, inside or inter sign political tactic against opponents. So it's a little bit odd to see this now being elevated to the foreign policy front. Uh, but uh, exactly the same tactics are being used against Russia. Uh, law firms are saying things like, we will not represent Russia. We will represent Ukraine free or pro bono at the international court. Um, banks are saying, we won't allow transactions to be processed in Russia. Uh, Russian athletes are being denied. In fact, just I just saw at the um, International Paralympic Committee says, well, the Russian athletes can participate, but not under the Russian name they, or the Russian flag or the Russian emblem. They just have to participate as if they are athletes with out a country. Um, so, uh, and then on and on it goes. The University of Milan <laughs> canceled the course on Dostoevsky. And when, when everybody said, this is ridiculous, Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky lived in the 19th century. He wasn't an ally of Putin. Uh, and so this is a, there's a kind of philistinism, a kind of stupidity going on here. And then the university goes, well, we will relent. We'll change our mind as long as we include Ukrainian literature, Ukrainian literature for balance, I guess. So, all of this is um, treating Russia, a whole country, as some kind of a wayward, uh, you know, Nick Fuentes. Uh, and, um, and what I find odd about this, and I, and, and I think it, it is odd, but what's wrong with it? You may say, well, maybe, maybe this tactic is going to work. Uh, I think the tactic is actually silly and flawed on two counts. First one, it confuses the virtual world with the real world. So in other words, here's Putin and he's operating in the domain of tanks and guns and, and he's got a, uh, he's got a military and a political objective. And the idea that he can be deterred by taking away his Twitter, uh, is laughable. Uh, again, it confuses the social media realm. And of course, we can live virtually in this, uh, you could almost call it virtual universe and, or, you know, go on meta, uh, which is part of, which is the, the metaverse, part of Facebook and buy virtual real estate and meet virtual friends and even develop a virtual identity. Identity, but nobody should confuse this with the actual world, which has real uh, property uh, and real people living in it. Um, and if if you if you cut your finger in the virtual world, you don't bleed. But if you cut your finger in the real world, you you do. Uh, the second point uh, to be made here is that a lot of this cancellation is really hitting the wrong target. I realize some of it is intended to be sort of uh, tailor focused or laser focused on the Russian oligarchs. But think of it this way. You have innumerable Russians who are trying to live their normal life and suddenly they can't 
get a check cashed at a bank. They can't have their transactions processed. Or if you're a Russian singer at the Met, you're making a living, you're a very good soprano, they won't let you sing. Why? Not because necessarily of your politics, but because you are Russian. So this idea of canceling all things Russian, uh, I think, is to fail to make a distinction. Look, if you're going to say that Putin is a dictator, it follows from that that he doesn't represent the Russian people. Um, dictators um, are not elected by the people in the normal course of things, uh, and dictators uh, and the people should not be held accountable for what the dictator is doing. Uh, and yet that's exactly what the cancel culture is trying to do is penalize ordinary Russians for the actions of the of the Russian government. In any event, I don't think that this is actually a reasonable way to conduct foreign policy. I think it really shows how a kind of woke generation has been sort of raised and acclimated to these kinds of tactics. And they somehow think that they're going to work with people like Putin and China's Xi.